Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Your Boyfriend. A horror game where your boyfriend might not be the one you want to be around. That's nice, we start this game with a jump scare. Enter your name. Okay. Welcome, Manly. You two have fun. Oh, I will. Well, I will have fun. The protag won't. My life has been chaotic. My family broke out into another fit of drama. So I left the nest, ran straight to college, and got an apartment and a job. But lately my job at a greasy spoon diner has been unbearable. The job doesn't pay the best. So that meant I had to find a roommate to afford an apartment. So quick note as I'm going through this game. I did upload an earlier version of this video, which is no longer there. But if you already saw that one, I have added additional footage to this video, along with some secrets while removing some other footage. So go watch the latter half of the video if you want to see the differences between my first one, because there's some new scenes. And now my roommate is always bringing some dropout into our apartment for late night study sessions. My sleep schedule is wrecked. And even better, the rent on the apartment is late. I heard once that if you become a roommate with a friend, you won't stay friends for long. In my case, the friendship gets strained thinner as my friend keeps making excuses while they need me to cover their half of the rent. Thanks to that deadbeat, I'm working harder just to lose my money on the rent. I'm nearly broke and getting a second job feels like it will kill me. At least in this park, I have some alone time. Yep, good alone time with the birds trees, that large boulder right there. I've always loved this part of the park. It's untouched by obnoxious family members and college jerks. Nice. The only people who come here are the groundskeepers. Even then, they only come by in the morning. I'm closing my eyes, I rub my face and huff out the tension in my lungs so that I could calm down enough to enjoy the peace and quiet. Just then, I feel someone sit down beside me. Strong. I turn and look towards the interloper. Oh, hey, take it easy. It's just me. Who's you? The stranger says, trying to keep me from leaping too high off of the park bench. You're a jumpy one, aren't you? He smiles and scoots himself closer to me, shyly and awkwardly. Hey, personal space, buddy. I keep my eyes on him, unsure what his attentions are. His unblinking eyes don't stray from mine. Not once. So, are you waiting for a family member or a friend? Um... Let's say both. I I'm waiting for everyone. Just seems kind of odd for you to be sitting out here. All alone like this and so far away from the jogging track. Are you planning to murder me? A chill runs down my spine. I cross my arm over my chest and slide myself away from him. And closer to the edge of the bench. How often does a sane person walk up to you out of the blue? I start asking such questions. Not often. For me, at least. He picks up on my unease, and refrains from sliding any closer. He crosses his fingers in between his legs and smiles warmly. I guess you only have voice-acted opening lines? Hmm. Interesting. I mean, you don't look like a groundskeeper. Or one of the old people feeding pigeons after doing Tai Chi. No, I'm just getting some alone time to myself. Things have been pretty intense lately. You know, with video games and all. He scoots himself even closer. No, his hand nearly touching mine as he smiles shyly. L look I know this is sudden. Very sudden. But if you're free tonight, can I have the pleasure in taking you out to dinner? Oh, so maybe it was just like a bug or it's just something he didn't play. Nah. Can I have the pleasure? Never mind. He was the weird one. I can't tell if he's a bit awkward or just eccentric. What? Why? Why do you have such an interest in me? Well, I'm your boyfriend. Title drop, run away. Isn't that why you're here? No, I was here to uh, play Game Boy and be alone. My boyfriend. Why would he be assuming we were in a relationship? There's an awkward silence as the stranger sits, patiently waiting for my answer. Yeah, so we, so we crossed eyes for five seconds. We're in a relationship now. You're totally into me. Uh oh, it's timed. No. 
What? No. I pulled my hand away from his. I thought that would normally try to at least attempt to be polite when I turn down someone's advance. But the strangest presumption that makes my skin crawl. He sits there for a moment with a firm stare, before pulling his hand away in a reluctant retreat. Oh, I see. I think that I'm getting mixed messages from you. I mean, we stared at each other for five seconds. I mean, it doesn't make much sense for you to come here and then not want me. I stand for the bench and turn to leave. Hopefully I can get back to the more frequented parts of the park before any other creeps crawl from under the rocks and bushes. Where are you going? He starts back me from the bench, but I can't read his expression. It is a tempest of mixed emotions, and none of them are as positive or playfully awkward as when I first met him. It's getting late. I'm gonna go ahead home and, uh, watch anime. I think that's what people do nowadays. I lied. I glanced over my shoulder to find the nearest path out of the park and to the nearest public street. Oh, well, maybe I can walk you home then. No, thank you. Look, it's nothing personal, but you're coming off as kind of creepy. I'm not really that comfortable around you. He rubs his arm awkwardly. Creepy. But... But I lo- uh, Sorry, I have to go. I cut him off and start walking away, occasionally looking over my shoulder. I don't want him creeping up at me while my back was turned. He never moves. He just sits there with a forlorn look on his face and stares quietly at the ground. I wander around the city a little bit more, visiting places I normally wouldn't visit. My paranoia, paranoia is getting me looking over my shoulder, wondering if he might still be lurking somewhere behind me. I don't know. Maybe I am overthinking things. But who knows? Some guy who presumes that he's your boyfriend before I ever even know each other's names is probably not the most psychologically healthiest of people, are they? Secretly, he's like a ninja. He's been following us the whole time. Or he's, he's just like, he's like in a trash can or a box. Just slowly inching up. Yeah, that's good enough to warn him my cold shoulder. Still, the way I left him behind like that was making me feel like maybe I was a jerk. Nah. You're not gonna be in here, are you? I come across a local florist shop that I remember passing on a few of my downtown walks. I've always been meaning to stop in and pick up some flowers from the apartment. But I can never seem to find the time. Well, I have time now. And I could use a diversion. So why not? Walking in, I look around and take in the rather pleasant aroma of the shop. I wander past the quaint displays of flower arrangements, pod plants, and small gift bags of potpourri, and a particular purchase of mine. From a rustic wooden shelf display containing the flowers of various houseplants, came a lovely, pungent fragrance from the deep red roses. Being mindful that some still have their thorns, I reach out to pick one up. I feel a hand brush against mine. I pull my hand away quickly, and glance at the person that I didn't see on the other side of the display. Better be just as a shopkeeper. Oh, fancy seeing you here. Nope, run. I tell you, he's gotta be a ninja. Cause he was here, he knew we were coming here. The man from the park beams upon seeing me, and gives me a smile before pulling the rose out. I didn't know you shopped here, too. I don't. I say, startled by his presence. The man then gestures to me with a finger over his lips. Shh, it's a small shop. There's no need to raise your voice. His comment rubs me the wrong way, but I try to compose myself. Did you follow me here? Or maybe it's like one of those twists. He's from the future. We've already been dating. He just came back in time like, oh, I'll date them a little bit earlier. It just, it just works out terribly. I whisper harshly, unsure if crossing paths with him again was a pure coincidence, or if I need to worry about him after all. What? Of course not. He looks a little hurt by my accusation. I come here almost every day, you know. Uh-oh. Was I really being a dick to him? No, that smile looks kinda evil. He fumbles around with the rose in his hand 
and his eyes stay shyly focused on the ground. I love flowers. This little shop is the only one nearby, so I come here a lot to see what new bouquets they have made, and if they have any on sale. I'll admit that sometimes I get a glimpse of you through the window of the windows of the diner that you work at, and lately I've been meaning to walk in to finally say hi, but I lose my nerves and stay out. You've been watching me? Uh, you've been watching me? Are you serious? What kind of creep are you? B but it's not like that. He reaches his hand out towards my shoulder and attempts to console me and calm me down. Now one of his greasy, grubby hands around me, I flinch away in shock and disgust. Don't touch me. I hiss at him. Hiss. And then turn and storm out of the florist shop. I don't look back. What if we are just being the dick? Maybe? Hmm. We'll see. It's finally getting dark out. Uh, I hate walking home at night. After crossing paths with a crazy stalker, I have a good reason for it. And now I'm out later than I wanted because I was trying to make a longer, less traveled path home. Just in case that creepy guy knew more about my habits. Shit. I need to find new places to hang out at. And probably a new job. I storm into the apartment, and slam the door behind me before doing another full body shudder. I hear rummaging a sound of my roommate, and the study partner in the kitchen come to an abrupt silence if I unceremoniously arrive home. I race by to my bedroom. They have a habit of walking around naked after their study sessions, and I don't even want to see if they were dressed this time. You better not be in my room. He's just gonna appear everywhere. In my room, I flop down on my bed. Muffle a frustrated scream with my pillow. <laughs> After a moment, I roll over my back and strap up the ceiling, trying to forget about my day, trying to forget about him. Before I fall asleep from sheer exhaustion, my last thought was a simple wish. Man, I hope I never see that weirdo again, considering this is just a start of this game. <laughs> Wishes really don't come true. Hey, hey, I saw something in the window. End of day one. Continue. So let's go the positive route. Dinner does sound nice. Let's go on an actual date with this person. Um, I guess. In this route, we're gonna act ignorant and just give you the benefit of the doubt every time. It's not like I'm doing anything anyways. It'd be a nice break from the monotony. God knows I could stand to forget my problems for a few hours. And this guy seems interesting enough to keep my mind off things. Really? That's great. He beams, taking hold of my hand into his own. I'll see you tonight at 7. He's about to stand from the bench, but pauses abruptly when he realizes that he was forgetting something. Oh, I almost forgot. Need a place to meet up, sorry. I know that I sound absent-minded, but I'm just so excited. Um, how about that old diner downtown? It's nice and quiet, so no one will disturb us. The diner downtown. Which one? You know. The one that you work at. Oh, okay. Great, see you tonight. Immediate regret. And just like that, he hurries off with a leap in every step, looking as though he had just won a lottery. Yeah, it is a different route. Okay, cool. I watch him as he disappears down a path that bends around a shallow hill and out of view. The park was quiet again, and the serene loneliness sets in once more. It's just me and a few songbirds singing in a nearby tree. I sit for a while, replaying the strange encounter in my head a few times. I suppose I should be flattered they took such an interest in me. I can't tell if meeting someone like that is normal or not. It's nothing like I've seen in the movies or television. But then again, if I were a Hollywood attractive, maybe it would be so normal that it would be almost annoying. I feel my cheeks flush as I think about him saying, Can I have the pleasure? A shy smile creeps from the corner of my mouth. He must be as new to this as I am. What a shy, awkward guy that used chloroform on us. The bird stops singing as I feel a knot grow in the pit of my stomach. How did he know where I work? You just now thought of that? 7 p.m. Here's the thing. 
doing where you work is actually not the worst thing. Because, yeah, you know, you could go to regular places. You can kind of figure out where someone works. That's, that happens naturally. You recognize someone. Knowing where you go to in the park, that's the scary part. Because that's very specific. You have to following that. Unless, okay, there is a very low chance of coincidence. But that specific spot in that specific park with Aurora Borealis, that's, you know, stalking. I show up at dinner feeling rather unusual about meeting someone at the place that I work after a completely spontaneous dinner date. I'm a complete stranger who knew that I worked here. Weird. I take a seat at booth towards the back. The diner isn't very busy tonight, which is less unusual than most people would assume. Even though I work here, this isn't where I would choose to eat at. Maybe he was another customer that I had never paid attention to. While I work, I let my mind drift, and after a while I do my job as if we're on autopilot. I don't really pay that much attention to the names and faces, even towards regulars. Maybe he was one of those regulars. Billy up his courage to ask me out every day, but kept losing his nerve. It's kind of a cute thought. But do I really want this to be a thing? Taking my seat, I wait. I look at the old-fashioned neon light clock that hangs over the jukebox. He's five minutes late. Weird for a stalker. I might as well know. Could be setting up a trap. I might as well buy myself a milkshake while I wait. The waitress on tonight's shift is surprised to see me at the diner on my day off. I imagine that she'll tell me, Job loyalty is one thing, but the food here isn't worth writing home about. After serving the stuff for a few months now, I agree with her. But at least the milkshakes are good. They are the really old-fashioned kind made with real ice cream and ingredients, and not the powdered mix and flavored syrup like the fast food places. The waitress must have been less busy than I assumed, because she brought my shake to me only a few minutes later. I pull a spoon from the vintage-looking ice cream glass and lick it clean. Nice. What was that? So good. I stir it. I stir at the shake a little before I take a sip. A man rushes in from the diner's front door. He looks like he ran the whole way here of something tucked carefully in his arm. Oh, he got flowers, probably. Because he went to the flower shop on the previous route, remember? I immediately recognize his sleeveless hoodie and the blue shirt. He quickly scanned the diner in a bit of a panic. He was running late and probably thought that I may have already left. I was one of the few people in the diner, but he still didn't seem to see me very quickly. I wave him over. A smile of relief spreads across his face. Still winded, he hurries down the row of booths and sits across from me. You're late. <sighs> I know. I, I, I'm so sorry. I had to make a quick stop. He speaks between breaths. I don't know where he came from, but he must have ran the whole way when he realized that he was running late. Giving a timid smile, he pulls out the long white box that he was carrying. He places it on the table and slides it over to me. Here! I bought this for you. Thinking about the early today in the park, it might have been a little creepy to ask you for a date on the spot. I thought I might get you a little something as a way of apologizing. If it was awkward for you, of course. You got something for me. Really? It better not be a severed ear or fingers or something. Open the box, I look inside. I see two long stem roses with deep red petals. The thorns were removed, and they're bound by a shimmering black silk ribbon. Oh, they're lovely. Thank you. He smiles as I take the roses out of the box gently, as if the thorns were still in the stems. I draw the aroma in deeply. They are so wonderfully fresh and fragrant. It's no bouquet or anything. But it... But it... But it, I thought that they looked nice? Well, but I thought they looked nice is probably what they were meant to say. He watches me admire his gift. They're very nice, thank you. I place the roses gently back in their box. He can't possibly grin any wider. Seriously, I don't think he can grin any wider. He realizes that he's staring at me. Maybe he just has a little too long for comfort. So he reverts to his shy eyes shyly. But there are a few nagging questions that have been hanging over me like a storm cloud. While well, he was in a good mood. I figured I should inquire a little about this cute but bizarre stranger. Dinner in a greasy spoon diner. With a stranger carrying a box of roses didn't seem ordinary. And I had to make sure that he wasn't going to propose at the cash register. I strung the milkshake with a straw for a second or two. So, how did you know that I work here? Oh, well, I walk by this place rather often in my walks. I, I catch glimpses of you through the window from time to time when you're working. I tried coming in, but... 
I get cold feet and just keep walking. Like a loser. He glares down the table shamefully. I reach over and give his hand a reassuring pat. Pat. No, you're not a loser. Do you know what? I don't even know your name. My name? The smile on his face fades into a slight grimace before his gaze drifts off to the side. I really don't like my name. Honestly, I'd rather be called something else, like a nickname or something. Oof, he must have a really horrible name, like Naruto. Or really horrible parents that he wants to disassociate with. Or maybe it's Sephiroth. Or maybe it's Dark Angel Lord XX. Okay, how about... Which, I get to name you? Oh man, I can name you Dark Lord XX. I won't do that. It's gonna be hard to read after a while. What should I call you? Hmm. How about... Naruto Sephiroth. <laughs> no. It's very tempting. It's very tempting. It's very tempting. Okay, I got it. There we go. How about Naruto Jim Sephiroth? You see, please, you know what that I came up with? Despite how silly attacking might have been. There's like a little crack in his, like, his eyes. Like, yeah, he's pleased, all right. Yeah, that's much better, honestly. Thank you. I reassure him. I give his hand a never gentle squeeze. The expression of disgust instantly evaporates into the light over the name I gave him. Wow. I didn't realize until now, but he has some really beautiful blue eyes. The vivid color left me taking their deep blue hue, and I didn't realize I was staring until he spoke up. You know when you're not like standing outside my window or saying that you're my boyfriend or chloroforming me? You seem like you could be a nice enough person. You know, if you weren't doing all those other things. Hmm. Are we having a moment or what? A blush spreads across his cheeks as he squeezes my hand back. Uh, sorry. I pull my hand from his, cursing myself for staring like that. Wow, now I'm the awkward one. I look away shyly. I can feel the heat radiating in from my cheeks, and I imagine them glowing bright red, like a Christmas light. The thought makes my cheeks warmer, and probably even more red. He chuckles and shakes his head. Hey, hey. There's nothing to be sorry for. He reassures me with a soft smile. He looks around for something to break the tension, and his eyes fall upon my milkshake. Hey, I was supposed to buy you something. Well, you kind of already did. I point to the box of roses. Besides, uh, we could share this? Just as long as I get the cherry deal. I scoot the milkshake towards him. Wow, already sharing milkshakes. He looks to the side, reaching over to take it. Man, our first date. And you're the one buying. I'm very terrible at this. Well, how about you buy next time? Okay, that's a creepy smile. His eyes go wide and he stares at me with surprise. N next time? You want to meet up again? No, but I will because that's the route. Well, this wasn't a total disaster, right? So yeah, I mean, we exchanged like five lines of dialogue. I named you Naruto Sephiroth. That's the whole date. His face glows as red as I imagined mine had, and he stammers wildly as all his fonts unexpectedly evaporate in an explosion of joy. I mean, I guess it wasn't. I mean, I don't think so. I don't, but I don't want to argue with you. It was cute seeing him struggle for a coherent font whilst trying to contain his happiness. His happiness of being with me, of all people. Still, as much as I was enjoying his company, and regardless of how flattering it's been, I couldn't stay long. I look out the window in a bit of an exaggerated way in order to get his attention. It's getting dark. I don't like walking home late at night. How about we continue this on our next date? Standing up from my seat, I pull out one of the napkins from the dispenser. Do you have a pen? Oh, I think I do. He pulls one from his pocket and hands it to me. I write down my name and number. And smiling, pass the pen and napkin back to him. Here, call me we can hang out again soon, okay? Taking a pen and napkin from my hand, 
He pieces down the number and complete awe before looking back up to me. We're gonna regret that. <laughs> of course! I'd love to see you again. I walk to the register. Pay for the shank? I have another quick look back at him. I wave and leave the diner. I walk more quickly to try to make it back to the apartment before nightfall. It gets colder outside, but for some reason I feel the warm the whole walk back. We'll feel extra warm when they break in for our window and sleep next to us. Once I'm finally back in my apartment, I quietly walk to my room so I don't disturb my roommates. It's good that these routes are different though. I like that, I like they put the effort into it. It's not just like, oh, different reactions. It's like, oh, this is completely different than our first run. Judging by the thumping and boning sounds coming from the other side of the wall, they seem to be having another study session. Fuck, I wish they'd be more quiet. I have to live here too. I don't bother to turn on the lights in my room. I flop heavily in my bed, face first into the mattress, limbs spread wide. They had a long, loud groan that made the couple next door pause for a brief moment. I eventually roll onto my back and stare up at the ceiling. Despite having so many other things in my mind earlier, my thoughts never strayed far from Naruto Jim Sephiroth. Looking over to the box that was still in my hand, I open up one more time. I pull out the bundled roses and a smiling <laughs> and smiling a little, I just thinking back the name I used, drawing their sweet fragrance again. I hope he calls soon. Oh, he won't need to call. He's right outside. Crap. End of day one. So let's choose some of the other last options. Dot dot dot. Yeah, that's right. I'm not seeing anything. The discomforting silence only grows. Still unsure and confused by the situation. I couldn't find words. It was just so sudden. He seemed to take the hand and pulls his hand away from mine. Looking away, he chuckles awkwardly. Hey, I get it if you don't want me to be your boyfriend. I just thought I'd take the chance to ask you out. If he is guilt tripping me, he's doing a terrible job. But at least he's taking the hint rather than pushing it. Well, it's just that I don't even know you, so... Now don't worry, I get it. He says, not at all expressing disappointment, but more along the lines of showing understanding. I suppose I'd be a little weird out too if some random stranger came up and asked me out on a date. Flattered, but still a little uneasy. He's taking the rejection well. No tantrum or pressure of any sort. Thank God. I better get going then. It was nice talking to you though. He says, looking back over to me and giving me a smile before getting himself up off the bench and taking his leave. I watch him walk off, feeling sort of terrible for how things ended the way they did. Maybe I'll apologize to him if I ever see him again. I stay in the park a little while longer after that odd event. I didn't know if I should go after him or just shake it off and enjoy the rest of my afternoon. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit, because it's probably gonna be the flower shop. Oh, fancy seeing you here. So it looks like the the being quiet route leads into the same route as the uh, kind of rejecting them route. Then from the park beams upon seeing me and gives me a smell before pulling the rose out. I didn't know you shopped here too. I don't. I think it's the same dialogue, I'll skip ahead. Okay, I guess that's not too bad. Maybe I am overreacting. I guess that's understandable. I mutter. It's tickled for me to notice people when I'm walking the same path almost every day, like a mindless robot. I guess that I can't really judge him for my lack of awareness. Look, I have to get going. I say, breaking the silence between the two of us. He clears his throat to muster up his courage. As he steps closer, hesitates on a question for a brief moment, and then finally speaks. I know you have no interest in me, and I get that. But can I at least see you again? Not a date or anything, but just to hang out. I feel as though we got off to a bad start. Why? I don't even know your name. My name. It's a joke, really. I much prefer if you made a nickname for me. The smell on his face fades into a slight grimace before his gaze drifts off to the side. I really don't like my name. Honestly, I'd rather be called something else, like a nickname or something. 
He must have a really horrible name. A really horrible parent that he wants to disassociate with. Taking this moment, I figured there was no real harm in making a nickname for him. After all, it would be easy for me to remember. Well, how about... So some of the comments mention there's an Easter egg here if I use a certain name. So let's see what happens. Peter Griffin. So you're no longer now to Sephiroth. Wait, what was that? How did you know my real name? Uh, I hate my name. Are you talking to girlfriend? Did she tell you my real name? Boyfriend and girlfriend. Hmm. I wonder if it is like a meta game. It might be. Maybe something weird like that. No, seriously, pick another name. Peter again. Wow, you're really adamant of calling me Peter, aren't you? <sighs> Fine, we'll go with that then. I don't know. I think it fits. Griffin. You may not like it, but you can. Can you smile for me, Peter? Okay. I look outside the window and see that the sun is getting low in the sky. Well, it's getting dark. I break it going home. It was nice to meet you, Peter. I turn to leave the shop. Hey, wait! Peter calls out to me. I turn to see him smiling sheepishly. Um, can I at least walk you home? I suppose? This is completely new, like, territory for me. He tries to keep a cool composure as I accept his offer. But I can see in his eyes that he is struggling not to bounce all over the walls. I know that he still has a thing for me. But this time around he wasn't pushing it and was instead respecting my not wanting to date. He glances at the rose that was still in his hands and holds it out to me. My mind goes blank for a second, before I find myself nodding. Thanks. You don't have to, though. No, I insist. He smiles and walks me to the cashier. He pulls out a wallet and thumbs through some small bills while the florist wraps the rose and places it in the stark white box. With the rose purchase, he hands the box to me. Shall we get going? Yeah, let's. I leave the store of him and together we walk to my apartment. The walk is surprisingly nice, and the two of us go back and forth in conversation. Peter surprisingly did most of the talking. He kept going on about his job as a product tester, and how most of the products were cheap junk. Once we have at my apartment, Peter looks down at me and tucks his hand into his pockets. Well, home sweet home. He grins shyly. We stand in the hallway, never of us knowing exactly what to say next. I start hearing faint sounds of my roommate and their study partner messing around inside. Peter hears them too, and his eyes get a bit wide. I cringe over the sounds. Anime! Peter was avoiding eye contact, and his cheeks were getting flush. He was imagining the same thing too. I never felt so embarrassed. More or less. I mutter, hesitant to open the door in front of him. Understanding my reluctance to go inside, from both my promiscuous roommate and my insecurity of having a total strange outside my apartment, he stepped away to give me a little space. Well, I better get going then. When did you want to meet up? I mean, when you get the time. I think for a minute. Shut. I work all day this week. Not a single day off to my name. Um, uh, I don't know. Tomorrow's a slow day since it's a Sunday. You can come over here if you like. It's that small mom and pop diner by the record store. Huh. Have you posted a customer to extend your break time? Devious. I like it. He flashes a wry smile before turning and walking down the hall. I'll be there around noon then. He looks over his shoulder, smiles and waves as he saunters further down the hallway and towards the exit. I imagine this is going to be pretty much the same route from here on again. I don't bother trying to my room, I flopped on my bed, face first into the mattress, and limbs spread out like a star. In a loud groan, I eventually roll into my back and stare up to the ceiling. So you pretty much just like go outside our window every time. But what if you're not the one outside the window? It was a rather eventful day. Like a little quiet time. I even made a new acquaintance, despite how we got off on the wrong foot at first. To try to get up and find a vase or glass for the rose, I rest on my nightstand. I don't bother getting undressed. I pull the blankets over myself and roll over and let myself drift off to sleep. Hi, buddy! 
Let's choose some of the other routes here. Roses, seriously? Gee, thanks. I look at the creepy black ribbon. I wonder if there's a card that reads, To my future murder suicide. Then all filled with the gift as I place a callus on the table in front of him. His face drops and reaches out to take them back. Oh, um, I'm sorry. If you don't like them, I can head out and get you something else. What do you like? Daisies? Sunflowers? Lilies? I fold my arms. I noted how pathetic he was being. Come on, you show up late, bring me some roses that look like they came from a funeral, and I had to buy myself a milkshake while waiting for you. Do you think that some cliche roses are gonna make up for this? His shoulders fall. Only roses close to his chest, he mutters awkwardly. I... I'm so sorry, I... I'll pay for the milkshake. Oh god. It's painful sounding. He's a pathetic little guy, isn't he? He's bending over backwards to try and make it up to me. How'd you know I work here anyways? I didn't know why he knew about this place. I stirred my milkshake and waited as he fumbles over his vats. Oh, uh, I, I walk by here often. Almost every day, in fact. I catch a little glimpses of you through the window whenever you're working. So that's how I know. I mean, I try coming in to see you. But I lose my courage every time. Well, that's not creepy or anything. He sinks more into his seat. I'm sorry. His whimpering eyes look up to mine. I'll make it up to you. I'll take you out to a nicer place next time. A and I'll be more punctual too, I promise. He clutches the roses to his chest as if in prayer. This man is desperate, isn't he? He's acting like a drowning man, mentally paddling to keep his head above water. I reach for my milkshake after my tummy rumbles at me. Less talking, more eating. As the thought of ice cream chilling my parched tongue passes, I think about the empty fridge at the apartment. Nothing in but ice trays and sauce packets. I could go for a decent meal at a better place. Pulling soft tree closer to me, I start eating, keeping the creepy man in suspense. I take my time, intentionally ignoring him whenever he tries to start a conversation. It was surprising that he had encountered his loss and left already. He must be very desperate to want to make it up to me. I like the spoon clean, then a satisfied sigh and lean back in my seat. Alright, I suppose I could give you a second chance. I mutter, mainly to myself, and like the bits of ice cream from the corner of my lips. His posture immediately strains. Really? You mean it? But you better be on time and bring chocolates. I wonder before standing up from the table. Talking next to him, I point to a napkin dispenser on the table. Write your number and I might call you when I've got some spare time. See, this one we're getting his number. The other one it's like the opposite. Yes, of course. He stutters, snatching a napkin and pulling a pen from his pocket. He quickly writes down his number on the paper before handing it to me. I'll do better. Much better next time. Taking a napkin, I look at the number, and notice that there is no name on it. Are you trying to be anonymous or something? I show him the napkin and tap my finger where a name should be. He goes eerily quiet. The uneasy, pathetic expression that he wore turns to pure disgust. My name is a joke, you know. To be honest, I've heard to go by whatever you prefer to call me. Okay, so this could pretty much be the same. We'll skip ahead. I mean, I'd like it, but you give me a smile for me, Peter. He gives a little smile and nods. He writes down the fragile bit of disposable paper before handing it back to me. I like that a lot better, really. Just pay for my shake. I roll my eyes before taking my leave. It was getting dark after all. I didn't like walking home at night. I walk by the waitress and tell her that the guy in the sleeves of his hoodie was paying for the shake. She could tell that I was in one of those moods and just shrugged silently. I didn't look back before I left. It was getting cold outside and I could feel my skin grow goosebumps. Maybe it was the dropping temperature, or the ice cream cooling me from the inside out. I don't know. I glanced back at the diner to make sure that the creep Peter wasn't following me. He sat twisted around in the booth watching me leave. He waved, but I turned and kept walking. I took a sharp unusual turn down the road opposite where I lived just in case. It would take more time to circle back at home. I'm better safe than sorry. By the time I passed the diner a second time, he was no longer in the booth by the window, but the waitress was cleaning the place from his table. At least that widow enjoyed a meal. My stomach growled bitterly. Next time I'll make him order me everything in the menu just out of spite. Damn, it's getting cold out. Once back in my place, I groan loudly when I overhear my roommate and her study partner doing much more than studying. Walking by the room, I pound loudly on the door. See, now we're grouchy. This is like the grouchy route. Other people are trying to live here, you know. I yell before storming into my room. Oh, 
Flopping onto my bed face down, limbs out, I let out a long, miserable groan. I take a moment to rest before rolling over onto my back to stare at the ceiling. The napkin in my hand. I look at the sloppy handwriting. Giving a scoff, I toss it to the floor by the bed. Meh. Let me get bother of him right now. I have too much to deal with at work tomorrow. I don't need a one to creep on my mind. It's hard to even get undressed. I roll over and drift to sleep. And then they're gonna be outside the window. Yep. Okay, what happens if we actually give him our name? Will they pay attention to that? Manly? Really? You're gonna name me after yourself. How long did it take for you to sign that brilliant idea? I mean, seriously. Your complete lack of creativity is making you less attractive to me by the millisecond. That's a good thing! Wait. Did you feel that? You just got more repulsive. Oh look, it happened again. How about you actually try to give me a name this time? Manly. Well, you're really adamant to call me Manly, aren't you? Ah, <sighs> fine, we'll go with that then. Manly beat Manly. Red Manly and Blue Manly. Player 1 and Player 2. Can you smile for me, Manly? So that's it for day one of your boyfriend? I'm actually going to show a little teaser of day two. I actually got permission from the developer directly for this. They said I could post like a little minute or less teaser of day two. There was some like miscommunication earlier uh, where I thought I was allowed to post the entirety of day two. But we talked that out and we I uh, corrected it. So I think this teaser is important because I'm going to show some of the characters you'll meet. Because I think the, the overall cast is going to be interesting. So it's kind of nice to see who they are. And there's one little bonus scene I have included in there. There you are. Where have you been? Um, sleeping. I've been covering your shit for the past 45 minutes without the boss even knowing you're not here. I check all the tables I had already gone and matching their faces and orders table by table. I don't think I missed any. A voice chimes in from the booth to my right. Hey there, stranger. Hi. And you are... Naruto Jim Sephiroth. <laughs> I can't say the name. I shouldn't do that. Takes me out of character. Jim. I'm Manly's boyfriend. Go easy with this one. Manly needs some good f anime. So yeah, this is going to be a pretty scary game. I can already kind of tell. There's going to be like that kind of R18 side of the game. Uh, I'm you know more of a horror person. I'll be waiting for the safer work version because I'm more interested in the horror angle. But it is going to be a kind of a dual release thing. I think the R18 version is coming first. And then there's going to be more of a, a safer work, more focused horror on the uh, kind of scariness, disturbing aspects of the story. And there is disturbing aspects. The, the stalker character, the boyfriend, is fairly scary. I, I think they're, they're pretty creepy. And I actually have some questions about the other characters, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with all that. But yeah. So, if you're over the age of 18, feel free to check out links down below and check out their Patreon, where you can pick up a copy of the current release of the game. I think it is going to be the R18 version. I think they have a day three coming out soon enough. And if you're under the age of 18, then uh, wait for the work safe version like me. Which will also, coincidentally, probably be a lot safer for YouTube in general. But yeah, anyway. So, if the golf wants you to play your boyfriend, day one, I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.